pure experiences. Welcome to the Pure Experiences Podcast. We are reading the book Pointers from the Sardat Maharaj. Let us skip to the chapter number 10 which is titled Images in Imagination. Whatever be the subject of discussion at session, Maharaj seems to see to it that the catechism follows the correct line of argument and whenever somebody puts an irrelevant question, Maharaj firmly but gently rules it out and brings the discussion back to the original theme. Occasionally, however, Maharaj has to leave the room briefly on some errand and during one such short interval, someone started talking about a politician who had pre-prominently figured in the press that morning. He said that he knew the individual personally and that he was a conceited bully. Someone else immediately contradicted the speaker, saying that the man in question was a perfect gentleman and it was a calumny to speak ill of him. An argument between these two was about to start when Maharaj returned and they kept quiet. Maharaj, however, sensed the sudden silence and asked what was going on. When he was told about the contradictory opinions, he was vastly amused. He sat still for a few moments and then started talking. Why this difference in two opinions? he asked. Because the opinion forming was done through an individual viewpoint, not through integral perception. Both the images of the same person arose in the imagination of the viewers. Both were entirely their own mental creations and basically unrelated to the object, that is the person, whose images these were supposed to be. Creation of such images, said Maharaj, is due to the functioning of dualistic discrimination, the me and the other one. This is indeed what may be called the original sin. This duality, the me and the other, is bondage. And if there is anything like liberation, in essence, there is no individual that is bound. It is indeed liberation from this concept of me and the other. What is necessary, said Maharaj, is to cease making snap conceptual judgments of things as objects and to turn one's attention back to the subjective source. He asked us to reverse our attention, to go back to the infant state, even to think of what we were before this body-mind complex was born, so that we would stop conceptualizing about others all the time and getting involved in mere mental images. At this stage, a visitor said, Yes, Maharaj, I can clearly see what you mean. But how can one get away from this continuous conceptualizing, which seems to be the very warp and woof of one's conscious life? Maharaj fixed his gaze on the questioner and almost before the Marathi translation of the, his question had been completed, he remarked, Rubbish, you could not have understood my point at all. If you had, your question would could not arise. Then he proceeded to explain the process of objectification. Whatever your senses perceive and your mind interprets is an appearance in consciousness, extended in space-time and objectivized in a world which the cognizing object, that is you, considers as separate from himself. And this is where the whole error lies. In this process, perception is not total. What is necessary is whole seeing, seeing not with the individual mind, which is a divided mind, but seeing from within, seeing from the source, seeing not from manifestation as a phenomena, but from the source of all seeing. Then and only then will there be total perception and correct seeing and apprehending. 
Maharaj concluded by saying that what he had said was vitally important and needed. Manana, pondering and meditating over it, not mere verbal discussion. Here ends the number 10 and we are introduced to something new which is which he is calling whole seeing and Balsekar has introduced us to this new way of being through a small story of two visitors opining through their own individual views as you must be knowing this is the normal what we call as normal mode of the mind it considers itself as an individual it considers others as individual and depending on the amount of ignorance and conditioning and programming in that mind forms a story about others not only that this mind forms a story about each and every object that it encounters most of what we see is just our imagination there is a thin layer of perception and on that layer is a mountain of imagination. This is how we are living. And many a times the reality is totally hidden from this dark wheel of imagination. The imagination is nothing but concepts that the mind keeps on piling one on top of the other. So much so that the whole life of that person becomes a fake life the whole person becomes fake you can see it just compare a person when he or she was a little infant little child just started walking and just started talking was there any fakeness there how genuine that person was and what happened by the age of 30 or 40 this innocence was wiped out and replaced by imagination compare a person who is tribal who lives deep in the jungle even though they are grown up they are very very innocent and compare that innocence with the cunningness of a person in the city even a lowly city dwelling pune is more cunning than the group leader or the chief of a tribal village why is that it is just conditioning. It is just the way, the environment in which that mind grew up. Now that does not mean that one is good and the other is bad. It is just the point here is that the minds, they do see everything through their own imagination. Not as the things themselves are, but through colored glasses. And it, it seems it is totally impractical to let go of this pile of ignorance that covers our perception. It seems it is impossible to drop this fakeness that we have accumulated. Because who will be I if I drop all this? The identity hides behind this cover of fakeness. And therefore, a visitor said in that meeting, that I can clearly see what you mean. But how can one get away from this continuous conceptualizing which seems to be an, an essential ingredient of one's conscious life? And Maharaj was surprised. He said, Rubbish, you could not have understood my point at all. If you had, your question could not arise. So this is the disability of the mind it cannot let go of these concepts that it has piled over what it thinks is reality the perceptions themselves are unreal and as if that was not enough the mind goes ahead and creates a mountain of imagination on that this is what an ordinary person calls life and there is no wonder that it is miserable because <laughs> It is a big lie. It should be spelled as L-I-E-F, not L-I-F-E. So he recommends that what is necessary is whole seeing. Seeing not with the individual mind, which is a divided mind, but seeing from within. 
seeing from the source seeing not from manifestation as the phenomenon but from the source of all seeing then and only then there will be total perception and correct seeing and apprehending then he again adds that this should not be a merely verbal discussion you need to think about it put this into practice how to see completely how to see the whole of experience and here comes the awareness here comes the consciousness when awareness is added into the mix of perception the perception is only 50% of the part the awareness is 50% the mind suddenly gives way to awareness which shines on the perception and the whole play is now seen as a play of the mind now it is okay to let the mind do whatever it is doing it's okay if it starts imagining it's okay if it constructs a st- story mostly the story is about me 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 there's nothing nobody else in that story others are just cardboard cutouts so we should watch this happening and there is nothing wrong in this mind wants to play so let it play but now this is happening under the watchful eyes of awareness now you can see completely it will become an experience where the awareness is looking at the play of the mind as it forms these the house of cards on top of a simple perception and then the memory is involved and according to its fears likes and dislikes preferences it builds up a fake perception on top of this already fake perception so this is the whole scene this is the seeing from the source not a zombie like state where the mind continues doing whatever it is doing and there is an identification that i am doing it and i am right what i know is truth this is a total self fooling mechanism that happens in the waking state of an ordinary mind so when this is cleared up something magical happens that there is a part of the mind that wakes up it is called intellect the pragya it is you can say 1000 times better than normal intelligence normal cleverness that appears in the behavior of people skills and whatever they have learnt mechanisms it is the vivek it is the discrimination that shines and that intellect the refined intellect probably there is no word for it in english this refined intellect starts correcting the mind just like under the watchful eyes of a watchman people behave they do not cause too much trouble so under the watchful light of awareness the mind starts behaving it sees its own errors and then drops them this is the self purification of the mind as if as if the rays of awareness are burning away the piles and piles of garbage that the mind accumulated and it is about everything now not only about people not only about what you read about somebody in the newspaper it's it's a minor thing it will clear up everything you become like a child once again free from judgments free from fakeness the joy of being genuine will shine on your face the eyes are going to glitter with this joy your speech will become sweet and so on the list is very long the kind of uh, transformation the simple act of to- whole seeing can bring about is amazing this is a new way of living this is truthful living now there can be questions like if everybody is a liar everybody is fake everybody is trying to use me as a doormat how can i be like this like an innocent child how can i survive like this I won't survive even a day in this world and the answer is very simple don't look for an insurance policy 
<laughs> Experiment. If you can't survive, you go back to old way of living. Give up the whole seeing and go back to the partial seeing or seeing in darkness, whatever. Experiment. Do not argue. A seeker does not argue. When a practice is given, it is given for practicing. That's why Maharaj says, do not do verbal discussion on these things. Either you think about it, which is the manan part. Do not blindly start practicing. That is also not recommended. And then do the experiment. This is called the life experiment. See, now I have done that and I can see that I can not only see my own fakeness since the minds are mostly the same. Same ego, the lower parts of everybody is same. The mechanism is genetic. So not when you start seeing your own mind, how it builds up the stories and imaginations, you can see others' minds very clearly. They need to utter only one sentence or take only one action and the whole of their mind is bared before you. This is my experience. And in the light of this knowledge, you can either approach the person or avoid the person. There is nothing more that needs to be done. Nothing more. Your survival will be taken care of. As soon as you try to lie, the pragya or the refined intellect will alert you. Look, this is the old mind. This is the animal mind trying to do something for survival. There is no intelligence there. It is just conditioning. Just memory repeating itself. And then you get a new option. That option is to stop. That option is to not do. This option is not available to everybody else. So you have an advantage. You can say no. You can throw away the whole situation. Instead of manipulating it unnecessarily. Look for something better. If you are in a situation where you need to lie, the whole seeing will show you the whole situation. Instead of this narrow thing where you must lie to get your work done or whatever, now you can bring yourself out of the hole and throw away the situation along with them will be thrown away the people who are in that situation. So what happens when you clean up all the garbage in your house? It is a happy place. Only experimentation will show you the truth of it. And believe me or not, once you adopt this kind of life, life which is full of awareness, you don't want to go back to the old gutter of stinking fakeness. You will avoid everybody who is like this actually. You may end up totally alone, lonely, Nobody to talk to. Nobody you can relate to. Still, you will prefer that. It is so alluring. It is so peaceful. It is so joyful. The mess of the society is no more attractive now. Once in a while, occasionally, you will find such a genuine person who is acting from the pragya. And you will find an instant connection to that person. The connections that you make in your society are give and take. Oh, here I can get something, so let me do some good here. Let me lick the feet of this person so that I can get something from that. Or here, well, there is no hope of getting anything. So I'll just avoid that person. I don't want to talk to that person. These kind of relations are relations of survival, calculations. This is why, that is why, there no relation is satisfying here. It is all covered up. In selfishness, doubt, jealousy and hate, what you call your friends and relatives, they invoke the negative emotions only. Once in a while you will find a genuine person and you will remember that face forever. There is no relation there. You don't talk to him to get something. He won't talk to you to get something. And there is a connection that you will see, not a relation. It is not sticky. There is nothing to cling there. Mind will want to cling and then the pragya will come and silence that also. There is nobody who is separate from me. So what is there to cling to? 
so the mind divides and this dividing is seen it is okay to divide otherwise this organism will not live for a day it's it's necessary to say that this is me this is not me it's okay because now you can see that the mind is doing this you let it do that let it finish its functions you simply observe that it is doing it but this awareness will let that happen which is most necessary and then that which is unnecessary the whole mountain of imaginations and stories will be dropped because it's totally unnecessary this is living in the moment the life unfolds moment by moment it is not that which is in your mind it is not that which is in the future it is here and now it unfolds like this it is a beautiful experience what has corrupted it is ignorance this narrow minded seeing number 12 manifestation is a dream numerous casual visitors come to visit maharaj just for darshan perhaps because someone in their group spoke highly of him and having nothing better to do they thought they might as well drop in and see what the whole thing was about but there are many who are deeply interested in the one subject about which maharaj talks quite a few of them have attended several sessions and they honestly believe that they have a firm grasp of what maharaj so earnestly talks about perhaps in answer to a query from maharaj if they have understood what he has been trying to convey one of them would say oh yes maharaj i have clearly understood it but i have only one last question the last question often happens to concern manifestation of the nomena as phenomena the questioner might say maharaj you have said that the absolute nominan is unaware of its awareness until consciousness begins to stir and the first thought i am arises and then the wholeness is broken up into duality and manifestation of the universe takes place my question is why did the first thought arise and why manifestation took place at all maharaj would look at the questioner with an expression indicating several reactions a mixture of compassion appreciation of the questioner's sincerity a certain amount of amusement at the confidence with which he thinks he has understood the subject but most important a disappointment that the questioner had not understood the point after all another failure maharaj would then say very softly i am afraid you have not really grasped what you have been hearing you have been hearing but not listening you have been hearing what i have been saying as a collection of little bits and pieces not listening to the whole hearing words with the divided mind of the individual instead of listening to the meaning with the whole mind hearing as a separate hearer not listening after integrating yourself with the guru and i do not mean the physical individual guru which you would have in mind but the sadguru within yourself otherwise this question would not have arisen but in a way i myself am rather fond of such enquiry because it exposes the usual way of thinking or rather the thinking exposes itself consider to whom did this question occur where did it occur did the question not occur to a you who considers himself an entity with an independent existence and did it not occur in consciousness there would be no entity this supposed pseudo entity in the absence of consciousness and consciousness is only a concept without any objective quality whatsoever and as such without any phenomenal existence what we have arrived at then is this in the absence of the substratum of consciousness there is no manifestation 
and therefore no separate pseudo entities to ask any questions at all and consciousness is only a concept therefore i call the entire manifestation the child of a barren woman in these circumstances can this which is this that we are ever be understood by the tainted mind of a conceptual pseudo entity indeed it is only when this entity disappears that the mystery dissolves for the simple reason that the searcher is what he is searching for your question moreover assumes that basically manifestation and non manifestation are two different things but they are not they are essentially the same state like waves on an expanse of water when colored by a sense of seeing it is consciousness in which manifestation appears with its limitations when colorless and limitless it is the absolute unaware of its awareness the phenomena are only the mirroring of nomena they are not different nomena is like again a concept in order to make communication possible the one source of electricity passing through a number of exhibits such as lamps fans motors etc or like the one source of light reflected in merit of mirrors consciousness manifesting itself through millions of ancient forms now do you see your question in the correct perspective a shadow wants to know why one of the characters played by a single actor taking various roles in a one man play wants to know why the answer could well be why not actually there could not be any question neither why nor why not because there really is no questioner at all only a concept manifestation is like dream why does a dream occur this is the end of number 12 manifestation is a dream and this tackles the frequently asked question why is there a manifestation why is there world why is there an experience we have discussed this matter a lot in our regular satsangs and we have looked at it from various angles and it seems that uh, this answer is totally beyond mind because this is a why question why manifestation took place why it appears every morning when i wake up there are some ways to answer this question they are all theories because we you can always ask why such and such thing happens so maharaj is telling that you are asking this question and that means that you have not actually grasped my teaching you are still on the surface you have not gone deeper into what i am saying and yes this is the ignorance of the mind now this is not an igno- ignorance that is uh, not knowing of something it is a habit of the mind you can say it is habitual of asking such questions so in the illusion in the world and there are many events that can that have an answer that uh, uh, you can arrive at when you ask the why question so you s- go out and you see that the road are wet you can ask why and the answer is obvious it was raining you see that there is no food in fridge you can ask why and the answer is can be there that somebody some guests came and they ate whatever was cooked that day and so on the mind needs a story behind the events and fortunately it does not go in an infinite loop asking why is and why is of house of everything so there is um, a limit up to which the why appears and then the mind assumes yes it is like this only when told that uh, look the whole world appears in consciousness the mind wants to know why why it appears and the answer is very simple that uh, and there are there are no reasons for things to happen the reason is valid only when something has already happened when <laughs> when it is when nothing is there 
the reason is also not there because as soon as you say okay this is the reason the x is the reason for something to appear now the x has already appeared there is already a manifestation there in form of x now you are free to ask how why did the word x appear in first place and so on so you see there there is a kind of limit to the understanding of the mind and this limit is that uh, the mind wants to know a story story which is familiar to it now how can something which was not there in the beginning be familiar to the mind which is itself is a manifestation which itself is a part of the world how can it grasp that which was there when it was not there it wants to know the reason but will it understand the reason in what terms will it understand in what language will it understand that before we ask why we should ask whether it is possible to know that why or not for everyday events it is possible to know although not really because you can go on asking why so philosophers have tackled this in their own way and uh, maharas says that you are not listening that's why you are hearing the words but you are not really listening so when he says that uh, the world is a manifestation and it is because of the consciousness and consciousness itself is a concept if you remember the definition of consciousness it is the reflected awareness it looks like it is there because the absolute awareness is being reflected through the objects all there is is absolute awareness it is broken down into the object and subject and hence the consciousness arises so he says well look again there is only absolute the manifestation was always there and the manifestation was never there and this thing is this answer is certainly beyond the understanding of any intelligent mind so without this division of the observed and the observer there is no manifestation there is no reality there is no world there is nothing but this answer is only half right because how will we know a knowledge has its limits if it is already there we know we know it there are ways to know it how will you know that which is prior to existing so we cover up our ignorance by saying that no no it's not possible that there was anything and since it is not possible for something to be there out of nothing nothing is there right now also and uh, this is not a satisfactory answer this simply covers up our ignorance and the correct answer is that uh, it is unknowable there cannot be a why of that which is prior to existence it just is you can ask that then why, what is this what is it that appears and the answer is very simple that it only appears it's not there and the existence gets reality only through consciousness only because uh, there is this division of something out there which is being observed by something in here it gets a reality otherwise there is no reality to it it is only an appearance and this is amazing but again there are no satisfactory answers for this question it cannot be comprehended using a, using intelligence using mind because mind is used to mind is habitual of thinking in terms of objects here it is trying to use its objective tools to grasp something which is subjective which is pure pure subjectivity absolute awareness and it fails so maharaj calls the entire manifestation as the child of a barren woman which is a well known metaphor that appears in scriptures and it is like a koan zen koan we are not supposed to know the meaning of what what does it mean to be a child of a barren woman except it points to an impossibility metaphors like this will silence the mind stops thinking 
the why question disappears because the experience is seen for what it is it appears it appears to be there its reality is a given reality it does not have a reality of its own it does not exist on its own without consciousness there is nothing to be conscious of so he says in the absence of substratum of consciousness there is no manifestation and therefore no separate pseudo entities to ask any questions at all can this which is this that we are ever be understood by the tainted mind of a conceptual pseudo entity it is only when the entity disappears that the mystery dissolves for the simple reason that the searcher is what he is searching for so here he is saying that this cannot be understood by the tainted mind of a conceptual pseudo entity it is beyond understanding he is saying essentially that he is asking who wants to know and when we investigate there is no one there who is asking it is in uh, arising through habit there is nothing to know here it's a habitual question there is no satisfactory answer to this question in fact it is not possible to know even the ordinary worldly why questions for example if i ask why is there this chair how did it appear here you can answer like i bought it from the shop and then the why again you can repeat how did it appear in the shop somebody made it from wood steel plastic how did that wood steel plastic appear and so on so you see it is not possible to know even the why the reason of this ordinary chair without knowing the reason of the whole existence and the mind wants to know the reason behind the whole manifestation it cannot know the reason behind is the simplest of the thing what happens is that we assume that that we stop questioning in day to day circumstances the mind is satisfied with the reason but when the same trick is applied to existential questions like why is there absolute awareness why is there consciousness why is there manifestation why is there world then there is nothing familiar for the mind to stop at actually there is not even one reason there for the mind to grasp most naturally everything is without any reason the reason is mind created just a story it will never understand the story but just like you can make up a story to satisfy the curiosity of a little baby the flying elephant brought you here or a bird dropped you that is how you were born that is how you got here a child is satisfied with the story it is magical he likes it we are satisfied by the stories of how the chair came here how the coffee cup appeared here although we will never know there is another point of view here why the mind cannot know this and that is because these things are not there really they are created they are made up they are illusions if they had some kind of substantial reality the mind would know instantly but it does not you need to go only two or three steps in and you can see this problem with the mind when it tries to know that which it cannot know with its within its limited area of knowledge knowledge is very very limited very tiny the unknown is bigger and the unknowable is infinite it is vast it is huge most of it is unknowable that is all there is knowledge is again a concept invented by the mind it thinks it knows there is no knowing there is just being there is no how there is no mechanism it is the mechanisms are all stories there is no reason there is no why the reasons are all stories they fall apart very very quickly when we get rid of these concepts like this then we arrive at that which is unknowable through mind but in a split second you can be that because you are that 
that's why he's saying that the searcher is what he's searching for and the reasons and the stories and the mechanisms that you are searching for is you you can be you cannot be known you cannot be known like the stories that you cook up for your other experiences when the knowledge ends the reality begins the reality is unknowable this reminds me of the um, question that was asked to the famous physicist richard finman and the interviewer is asking why do the magnets repel and uh, <laughs> finman was not amused at this question he says what do you mean why and then he goes on to explain that things are what they are there is no why for them once they happen you can explain them using equations using laws how they happen you can even exploit them to get your work done for example you can use the magnets to produce electricity live a very happy life you will never know why they repel you will never know why they attract the manifestation just is it is and it is not like child of a barren woman you can think about it for the whole day and you will arrive at nothing one can be all this which is easy easier than knowing how to be you are already that simply remove these concepts and stories that i am this and i am that and you will arrive at being the pure being and it does not now matter whether the manifestation is or is not or is both is not both he again goes on and says that your question moreover assumes that basically manifestation and non manifestation are two different things but they are not they are essentially the same state like waves on an expanse of water so he says that no trying to know the why is like one of the characters played by a single actor taking various roles in one man play wants to know why so he says that there is no such thing that is unmanifested and then it turning into manifestation it is one for example there there is there are no waves separate from the water if you say water is unmanifested and waves are manifested then it is only a concept only a imaginary thought they are not separate so how does manifestation happen has no answer because it did not happen it was always there as this absolute it appeared because of this ignorance that i am separate from what is i am not what is i am something else and this thing the world is something else and now the mind cooks up a story of why it is there so a appearance of the separate one which he calls a shadow and he says the shadow wants to know why so appearance of the separate self gives rise to such kind of confusion and when it does not find an answer it appears mysterious the answer lies in dissolution of the separate self and the mystery becomes you pure experiences You are listening to Pure Experiences by Tharun Pradhan.